Okay, I think we're ready to open the public hearing for limited segment approval of the fitness center at uh, Cambridge School of Weston. Um, Great. I'm going to start this up. Can, can I actually just of course. set a few yes. ground rules you first? Yes. Um, we've given this about um, 45 minutes for discussion. Um, if you could make your presentation in say 20 minutes yeah, or so, then, then we could have um, comments and questions from the board for uh, 15 minutes or so, and then open it up for any other com questions we're, we're or comments. Yeah. Yes. You, you approve of it? Mm -hmm. Good. Um, I, I'm Al Abel, and I'm the chairman of the planning board, and my other board members are? Oh, Suzette Bryce. David Bertelson. Steve Oppenheimer. Roy Chalmash. All right, who's going to be making the presentation or at least starting it? I'm going to start it. All right, could you uh, introduce yourself, please? Of course. So I'm Jane Molding, the head of school at the Cambridge School of Western. And first of all, thank you for um, letting us be here tonight and for all your great work on behalf of the town and of the school and for a good site walk, I think, yesterday morning. Um, one of the things we really care about as a school, and I think you know that about us, is one, working really constructively with our neighbors, with the neighborhood, and two, really thinking deeply about our commitment to environmental sustainability. So we're very excited tonight. In a little bit, I'm going to introduce uh, my colleague, Julie Johnstone, who's our assistant head, who's been the internal head of this project at the school, and she'll introduce our team. What's great about this team is it's a team you've actually seen before on a number of our projects. Um, we feel very comfortable and very good about working with folks that we're familiar with and who are familiar with the town of Weston and equally committed with the in environmental practices that we care about. So tonight we're going to present to you, um, and we hope your approval, limited site approval, a wonderful new health and fitness center which will replace a very inadequate uh, gymnasium that was built back in the 1950s on our main quad, which has really been unusual, unusable for a great deal of um, the current program. So we have been working for the last uh, five, six years, perhaps longer, on looking at what our current program needs are and what kind of building would match those program needs. So I want to say up front right away, we have no plans to expand the size of the school, no plans to expand the size of the program. What we'd like is to actually build a building that is adequate enough for our current um, program and for our current students. We really hope we can keep as much green space as possible. That's very important to us. It's always been a commitment. We will limit the amount of site lighting to make it adequate, but not to make it so um, overly lit that that's a problem in the neighborhood. And we really hope that um, this will be a place where our students can enjoy what they do in terms of health and fitness. We have a great commitment to health and fitness and participate on our campus as opposed to leaving the campus each day, which many of them currently do, by bus to other facilities. So those are some of our goals in building the building going to hand it over to Julie, who's going to introduce the team and go into a bit more detail. Thank you. So I'm Julie Johnstone, and I have been working on this project since 2009. And I think that's one um, point we want to make is that we've really had an extensive process. We've worked with a number of consultants prior to the group that I'm going to introduce to take the time to really make sure this was where we wanted to site the building. Uh, a lot of our work with wetland studies and surveying has really identified this as, as the uh, prime spot for us to have the least impact on um, on our neighbors, which is which is a, as Jane said, a very big deal to us. Um, you know, I, I I think another point to raise that is we feel like we've really done our due diligence too. We've met both informally and formally um, over the last year with the conservation commission, the town planner, uh, preceding Betsy as well as Betsy, the board of health, the fire department. And even after our submissions, we've had follow-up informal meetings with them as well to make sure that we are doing what we need to do to be prepared and to be as transparent as possible with the town because that is important to us. Um, currently, I want to introduce um, the group who will make the presentation, the formal presentation. Uh, first, from Green International, who has worked with the town of Weston, uh, we have Danielle Spicer and Peter Richardson. Um, from Stanmar, who is our design-build firm, we have 
Jerry Burke and David Rose, who is the architect, um, and Jerry's part of the um, the design build uh, company. We have Ruth Letterly, who is from Carol Johnson Associates. She is our landscape architect. We have um, Shara Lewis, who is our owner's project rep from Pink and Company. And again, all these folks have, their companies have worked with the town of Weston before on our previous projects. So, with that in mind, I'd love to introduce our uh, okay. folks from Green International. Yeah, Peter Richardson with Green International. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. So I'll, just, I'll give you a quick um, overview of the existing conditions. And then we'll talk about the site improvements that were we'll proposed. Excuse me. Yeah, no, so, no, no, no. Um, this is the, just the existing conditions, an aerial view, just to get everyone's bearings. Uh, I'm assuming that most of you are familiar with the campus, but this is Lexington Street right here. Uh, Peter, could you please step back? Um, just so the camera can see. Or tilt the Lexington yeah. Street is That's right great. here. And Georgian Road is right here. So the main campus and the quad is uh, the school is right up in this area. This is the gymnasium, the older gymnasium that. Jane was talking about what we've shown is the the limit of work and red. So we have we're, we're working along the existing driveway coming into the site because there's some utilities that we need to bring in from, from Lexington Street. But essentially, the building is going to be sited right here, tucked into this this wooded area right here. We will be eliminating an existing pool that's out there, and there will be some uh, parking area in front. We'll show that on the site plan. There is also a, it's not shown on this drawing, but there is a flood zone in this, in this site that runs, it's a, an approximate flood zone, a zone A that runs through the field in this area right here. There's a, a drainage uh, culvert that, this, this is a wetland area here that drains through the site down to the south, and then there's also a second culvert that ties into that. And this, this it, I guess at one time probably was a, a brook in years back, but this, it's been culverted for quite some time. So that's the existing site we're working, and this is just a, uh, there's going to be some other site plan plans presented more in the floor, but this is more for the civil engineering part of it. So again, the building will be sited right here. We have a, a, a the, dry, the existing driveway runs in this way, there'll be a, a drop off and a turnaround with some parking, but there's also uh, landscape areas in front of the building. Uh, this will be designed so that there they can be some buses parking in this area. And the whole reason for putting the fitness center down here is to be closer to the, uh, the athletic fields. So there'll be, there's enough uh, room to not only get a fire truck in and around here, but also to park buses here, a couple of bu buses for visiting teams, and then also enough room to do some, uh, have drop-off vehicles here and still be able to maneuver out. And then currently there's an existing parking area that's paved if you've come into the site. There's a, a small parking area right here. That's going to be eliminated, and we're going to have some head and head and parking on either side of the um, of the driveway coming in. So we'll have a new um, we have new gas um, gas and electric and, uh, and a new water line coming in. So all those utilities will be running in this way, and then we're still working right now um, on designing the septic system. So there's another consultant that's working on that. Right now, and it may be here or it may be in another location. We're still doing some test fits and trying to determine that exact location. The drainage is, is probably the number one challenge with the project. So, Weston has a pretty um, you know, thorough uh, bylaw and it requires the mitigation not only for peak flow rate but also for volume. So, in order to comply with that, with the roof, new roof area and the impervious from this parking. We have quite a large uh, recharge system that's going to be sited right in front of the building. And the way that's going to work is this building is going to be set up probably about five feet above existing grade, which when you get into the hill, it, it won't, it'll be kind of tucked into the hill. We'll actually have a cut in the back, but it'll be a little bit of a fill in the front. And this part will be elevated about five feet from what it is right now. Beneath that will be a, a large field of concrete chambers, which is going to take all the storm water from the roofs as well as um, half of the parking area. And we also have another tank that will be put in to, to capture the lower portion of the parking area. So we're complying with the town's bylaw, which is it's a fairly large uh, system for the, for the drainage, and that will result in us mitigating both peak flow and in volume. Have so, you gotten a sign-off from the Stormwater Committee? I don't believe we have yet. We have not. No. no. So we'll, we'll need to uh, do that. 
I think the, the town engineer has, has reviewed it. As far as I know, Steve has looked at this, right? Steve Clark. So, yeah. And one of the things we talked about with the water department is um, so, so that we don't end up with a dead end main. In a future renovation, this will be looked through. We, a number of years back, we did a, um, we did the Performing Arts Center at, at the campus. The water pressure up on Georgian Road was very poor. We actually brought in a brand new eight inch line and created a loop. So in the future, there'll be a second loop that won't happen under this. This will be phase one bringing it up to here. But when they actually do the rest of the renovation of the gym in the future, that will get continued. So you will end up with the, the water system will be much improved in Georgia Road and for the campus actually after the once that final renovation is done. Um, so I guess with that, I probably would turn it over to Jerry or David, who well, wants to speak about the building. Um, Maybe can just give a, a rundown of the design of the building. Sure. Uh, so I'm David Rose. I'm the architect of the record on the project. And um, we basically have, uh, it's kind of hard to talk about flat elevations, but I'll... Two of us are architects. Oh, good. All right. Well, this is the entry facade here. And um, uh, the entry is essentially a two-story uh, space that has a curtain wall um, sort of highlighting that area. And it's set against um, essentially two, two background walls that are of stone um, veneer. And it, it essentially creates a nice signage wall and um, sort of highlights, again, the entry uh, of the building. The rest of the building um, is essentially um, uh, presented in a clapboard. Uh, it'll be a, uh, probably a hardy, hardy plank clapboard. Um, and um, again, we have the repetition of these stone walls in various places uh, across the front facade. Um, again, just used as an accent material and to tie in, in the material that we're using at the front of the building. Um, we used a lot of effort to kind of bring the scale of the building down to human scale. Um, also the siding helps do that because the, the largest volume is the gym and that's actually pushed back into the existing grade and into the existing treescape. Um, so really uh, the, what you're going to experience is half the building as a one-story building and the other half as the, as the two-story element um, with the, the large three-story gymnasium volume tucked into the hill. Do you have a floor plan? Um, yeah. So again, the building, about half the uh, floor uh, footprint of the building is the gymnasium, a two-court gymnasium. Um, we have seating that was sized for the school population so they can have an assembly down here. <coughs> the rest of the building on the lower level are uh, locker room and uh, student locker rooms. It's a team rooms, uh, faculty and staff locker rooms, a little training area, a group exercise room, and uh, public restrooms and some office areas and an uh, entry lobby leading to the uh, gymnasium. On the second level, it's basically the uh, fitness center, uh, exercise equipment, and another group exercise room that's subdividable, and a walking, jogging track around the perimeter of the gymnasium. So that's all, this is the one-story section of the locker rooms. This is the two-story section with the entry volume and the two-story gym, which is set into the L side. <clears throat> I don't know if uh, you want Ruth to go over there. Uh, the elevation, we have an elevation uh, calculation. I can go over if you want, or, sure. You may want to take some of those off, I think that's very good. But just using your, your calculation in your zoning bylaws, we've calculated the existing natural grade at the four corners of the building, taken the average of those, <coughs> and come up with a, a, a building height of 27.6 feet. Um, when, this is a flat roof building, so it's below the 32 foot allowed. I'll just, uh, again. Just give you a sense of the uh, site lighting for the project. This is a, a layout, a proposed layout of the of the lighting for the new parking area and the roadway. 
The red are new fixtures, the blue are existing fixtures that would remain, the yellow are some existing fixtures that would be removed, uh, and the green are lighting on the building that would be uh, provided for both egress and for uh, additional lighting in the front of the building. Um, we haven't completed the photometrics for these. Uh, we'll work on that now to uh, just determine the, the height and the, and the wattage of these uh, luminaires. We tend to, we, our standard is an average of one foot candle on the ground. And we're probably looking at more like a half a foot candle that we're trying to achieve in the parking areas. Do you have you picked the fixtures yet? Um, we do have a fixture that was used on the Warren house. Was the pole lights? The pole lights. Uh, building that building, one. The building met a green fixture. Do you have those picked? Um, we haven't selected the ones in front of the building yet. That will be more decorative. Uh, for the egress lights on the side of the building will probably match what was used on the Warren House as well, which is a, a small LED oval, uh, pretty utilitarian, uh, small small wattage picture, 14 watt LED. Yeah. <laughs> Given the setting of, of the building um, without any view from Lexington Street, a grove of trees here and a grove of trees here um, obscures any view from the street. So we're not doing any screening as part of the plan. These are the, this is the barn maintenance barn if you want to orient yourself. And these are the other, this is the new dorm and the other three houses that are there. Um, so the, the uh, goal of the planting is mainly to integrate, further integrate the building into the natural setting. We've got woods behind it and open fields here, wetlands, wooded wetlands across the street. So it's a simple plan, nothing fussy. It's, a, it's, a, it's very simple. It's lawn. You can see these light green areas. Um, a big part of our effort is to try to save this existing oak that's here. It's quite large and we've been working with an arborist for his recommendations as how best to grade around it and treat the area around it. Other trees that are there, are some trees are coming out, but the arborists have previously identified them as potential hazards, so they don't need to come out anymore. In front of the building, um, some stone walls to hopefully use the same building material that was used on the building for seating in front of the wall, uh, building when students are waiting for pickup. And um, that area is backed up by some sweet fern, which is a native plant, um, low woody shrub, and that backs up those walls and goes around to soften the um, fence around the pool, which it sits right here. We've got a path connecting, starting the connection back up to the quad, and, and that um, sweet fern finds that whole area. A few trees over here and some shrubs, um, by Burnham Dentatum arrowwood, which is another native found in the woodlands around here to try to screen some utilities there and then one getting a new oak started there right at the new entry. So very simple. Okay, great. Um, anything else that you want to <coughs> say to us in, in the presentation? Um, no, we failed to introduce uh, Robert Labergian, who's our Director of Operations and Finance, so he also can answer some general questions along with us, but I think we've covered the goal here, so hopefully within the time. You are. You allotted us. You, you did it. All right. Congratulations. Excellent. <laughs> um, in that case, start off with um, site engineering. Dave, okay. your comments. Uh, still have to review it. So you haven't reviewed it at all? But I've started looking at it, but I've kind of just gotten into it. Okay. Um, so we're going to need that input, and I think we're going to need the input from the Stormwater Committee, too, at some point, um, and the Board of Health. Well, um, yeah, typically the Board of Health will give a yay. With regard to the septic. Right. Yeah. And I think we need some additional information about the lighting Presumably, dark sky compliant, and oh, so yeah. standard, and all that, total buildings and stuff, because you had to quite finalize that. 
and just some other side pods. Are there any generators, transform, pad mounted transformers, anything? Condensers. Condensers, dumpsters, anything we can trip over on the site? It will be a generator and a transformer. There will, they will, not, there will not be a dumpster there. The school actually handles all their uh, refuse in the building every day, so they, they take care of that daily. But uh, this magenta line day, when you come in, and that's the, uh, the primary electric line coming in. So it will come into this point, and it's going to be a, a pad mounted uh, transformer and also a generator right at this, this location here. This All the utility, the mechanical area is right here in the building. So that's where that will be sited. So they have guidelines of you know, generator. And I think they've already worked with the utility company. On well, the generator, um, I, just to interject, the generator, we're putting in a pad and we're doing everything ready to make the generator ready, but the school doesn't intend, the plan is not to necessarily install the generator at this point, but we'll be ready for a future installation of the generator down the road. But we will fill out whatever DP or requirements with the generator application. That was one of their recommendations, actually. There's no more than uh, 40 DP agents at the, at the uh, at property line. So, you know, a lot of people put a sound attenuators, basically covers over it and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, different generators produce different sounds depending on the fuel and how the design and all that. Um, the stormwater, which I you know you're going to be looking at and stuff, I know this area fairly well, and just south of here, it's a lower area which tends to pool water. And so what happens with, you know, any changing that may happen coming off site, not just runoff, but, you know, groundwater also, is certainly something that we'll be looking hard at. Um, but you see, that low area was actually created about 10 years ago when the school did their fields, we graded their fields. When we was determined there was a flood zone in there, it was approximate zone, we had an elevation, but there used to be, um, it's a little bit off this plan, but uh, there used to be a swale that was in this area right here. When this field was filled in, we actually provided to the Conservation Commission, we had to provide compensatory storage. So that's that's why you see that low area that was compensated. I'm, the, I'm thinking of the low area and the housing that's below, that's south of further down this area. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And that goes off the, I know that those houses, yeah. you know, when it okay. rains, they get very close. Yeah. They get water in their yards and, you know, they, mm -hmm. they get a lot of panic. Yeah. You know. The other thing is, as Peter, as you know, and, and I've worked with Peter on some flood maps yeah. um, with FEMA and stuff. As you know, I mean, it's an unnumbered A zone right. from, what, 30 years ago? Yeah. 25 years Which ago? Which I'm assuming was probably a quad that was extreme there. That's how it got mapped. So, again, so, yeah, so in terms of what the actual hydrology is, yeah. um, you know, Obviously, you you know be very diligent yeah, sure. about that because I, I wouldn't rely on the FEMA maps on that. No, no, that's that, we're out, we're outside of that A zone. I mean, right, but I mean yeah. the, the delineation of the A zone may have right. less to do with reality than we right. like to think. Well, yeah. Anything else on the engineering, Dave? Uh, I mean, it's early because you really don't you have. Yeah, I mean, it's just those other thing, other thoughts, and then. Mm -hmm. Even down the road, father, um, you know, in the limited work line, standard condition is that there's limited work, there's an orange snow fence around the whole limited work line, which in this case would cut your campus in two. Mm -hmm. So I, I think maybe, you know, you have the benefit of having a contract room involved, mm -hmm. um, the fencing line, construction management plan, that type of thing. Yep. You know, how the camp is going to work. Have, has the school met with you and Kim at all? Or what's the status on that? Um, I talked to Shara on the phone. Yeah. I didn't hear the question. I was wondering if this, if anyone from the school had actually met with our consultants yet. No. Wait, uh, we've spoken, yes. Typically, we like to do that. We're going to try. We're gonna trying to schedule something. You're going to schedule something, right? And Dave's away next week, um, and it may. And Shara's not able to to do anything 
for next Tuesday. So we may have to flip it to the following Tuesday. Okay, so that's or, a, that's we, that's we're in the works. process. It's in the works. Okay, so we should really hold off on comments like that until we get more discussion. Well, any thoughts you have would be appreciated. Pardon? Any thoughts the board has? Well, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I expect we're going to give you some. Um, Kim, you, you're you're in the same place. Yeah, I mean, I've spoken with Ruth a couple of times, and I think we're headed in the right direction with the landscape. Um, nothing sort of strikes me right now. I think that that's sort of the easier part of this project at this yeah. point. Um, so, right. no major comments on landscaping right now. One question I do have is: Do we know exactly how many trees are coming out for the for the project oh, from the site itself? For this, for this to go in, do we know how many trees are going to go in the wooded area? Yeah, no, we don't have to cover up. Okay. That's yeah. It might be helpful yeah. to know. Would we do over a certain side? I mean, it's, it's a wooded area, so yeah. we can take over anything over six inches. Mm -hmm. I think mean, those have to be surveyed. It's a forty thousand square foot building, right? It's a 30, 31,000 square foot footprint. Um, yeah, but uh, so right. any, any of those trees coming out are going to affect that groundwater level and stuff. And you, like you say, I'm, I know that you don't have a lot of margin for error there, so mm -hmm. I would think about put a bunch of willow trees in or something. <laughs> suck them all, suck all the water you can. You know. So just, you know, your you're tight margin on that mm -hmm. and stuff. Yeah. Um, comments from you guys? Is it anticipated that there's going to be blasting and all? Uh, we do anticipate that we'll hit some uh, ledge in that area. There's also the likelihood of hitting some large boulders that may have to be broken apart. And we <coughs> would like to have uh, potentially a crushing operation on site just to be able to reuse that material rather than hauling it off site. And didn't you, in your um, application, they mentioned that if they can do the uh, rock grinding on site, it really cuts down the number of truck Correct. loads that are coming yes. in and out. It's yes. not a good idea. So that's the, that's the pounding. Um, I don't know. What, is, what are the it rock is, crushings? It is a pounding. Is it it's a pounding? pounding. So it's, you know, Aberdeen. Um, it's faster. It, one of the things, one question I have is, I don't, I, it's hard to know from the site plans where the where the nearest of butters are, um, I, there must be one on Georgian Road. Is there are there others? Bottom of the the Camp of Green Yeah, I think if it's one at the end of the last field, that's yeah. probably the closest neighbor. So yeah, yeah, that's the closest. Right. This is the school. This is all wetlands and woods here. Right. What's that guy? I think there's two the houses that are that are fairly abutting there. Yeah. yeah. The one that's behind the field here, that red house, and then there's the one in this little. That one. And then what about in the upper right of the of the photograph. Is that is that's that a private house or is that part of the, the campus? This is a dorm. This is one of the dorms and, and this it's all part of the campus. Part of the campus? Yeah. yeah. Of the and that's the head town stuff. All right. So that up that side it's it's still school. Yes. So yep. the nearer the nearest of butters are down lower part of the photograph. Yeah, I mean there are, would be some here at the end of Fairhope, mm -hmm. but these are the the nearer Closest ones side. to the building. Closest one. Right. Do you look? Yeah. So they're probably, okay. And we will be holding a, an open session for the neighbors to come and review the plans in the fall so that, that they can see what we're planning and hoping to do. It's the, it's the noise generated. Yes, the absolutely. Yep. Um, yeah. I've asked the building commissioner for a determination as to whether this triggers so, Good. Um, yeah. He will be making that call. It's got to be more than a thousand cubic yards. Mm -hmm. Well, the the application and indicated sixteen thousand cubic yards of material to be excavated. That's and eleven thousand cubic yards of that. That's twenty seven. That's a I mean, move. It's not you know. So it's that's five thousand. Yeah, and it's a net five thousand. Wait, well, no, no, it's, it's the total amount moved. 
right, right. So it's yeah. It's so it doesn't added. matter. It's over a thousand. And without the crushing facility, it would eliminate. Well, um, if the crushing facility is allowed, it would eliminate the need for 800 to 1,200 truck trips versus 200. So we need to get some calculations on what's happening. Right. Definitely a special yeah. permit. Yeah. So well, but he's going to make a formal determination. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've also asked him for a formal determination um, um, on the issue of lot lines and dimensional mm -hmm. setbacks. Um, because what's been happening is that there's an, I mean, this site is, is, is one of many where. Um, schools or facilities have been created via a number of lots assembled and the lot lines haven't been uh, removed so um, technically there's supposed to be a 35 foot setback and um, this building is set back from a lot line a, a rear lot line 6.5 feet where 35 is required so, Is there actually, a parcel map anywhere? Um, I did have a plotting map. And this is coming up on a couple of sites. We've asked legal counsels. So that's a six point. But this, this has a snag because this lot straddles the Western Waltham line, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do they have a Waltham? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. 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 Or, or it looks like it already is right there. This oh, it is. Yeah, it's all. Yeah, yeah this big chunk of it. So it said nine acres is a long one. So, but can't they just, I mean, I don't know, legally, what, this is, what do you do just to remove it, to consolidate the lots within our town? Sometimes with schools, it's hard just if they've bonded or financed things on a lot by lot basis. Yeah. And that can complicate things. Yeah. Right. As opposed to like it was some, some guy who owned two lots and wanted to build a house on it. Well, okay, it's, it, it's a complication that we probably don't have to worry a lot about because it's their lot line. I don't, I don't think Betsy would necessarily agree with that. Right. I think historically this town has kind of treated it as an assembled lot and by assessor's plats, but what I'm hearing from Legal counsel and a number of other planners. That's technically probably needs some zoning relief. So we're in the process of reviewing that. Yeah, it, the simple solution would be to get a variance with the CBA. Or to do an ANR. But then you have to demonstrate hardship, which would be an interesting challenge. Or to do if you did an ANR and eliminated the lot line. Okay, or so relocated that line. Right. Yeah. Right. Relocated. So there's a number of different yeah. fixes. Yes. All right. So that has to be. Another little work. Roy, did you have any other questions? Because that was a little. Okay. <coughs> Steve, anything? Yeah. Um, could you put the proposed site plan back up? <coughs> so when I look at that, it's hard to understand why the building is where it is, and I was wondering if you could explain it, because when I look at it, I want to push it down the hill, and mm -hmm. that little notch in the upper right-hand corner of the building, I want to just push that right around the swimming pool area. So if it, if I can explain, so this is a wetland area here, right? this is a wetland area here, right? and you have the whole hill with the existing buildings up here. This is another large wetland area here. And the only real buildable flat area that you have to work with is their playing fields. So that's yeah. and that's they, the only other place to, if they, if they had put the building in the 
they would have lost the field, basically. Right, but you have that huge area in front of the building, and I can see the slide of the building down right there. Right here. Down well, the well, I don't know. Well, the other thing we're trying to do, too, we, we've, believe it or not, there's only, this, this is like the only wedge where you can stay out of the 50 foot no build zone. Because we have the wetlands here, so we have a 50 foot no build, 50 foot. So Where's the 50 foot no build for the wetlands in the, the middle? 100, the buffer zone is here, so it's. No, not the, the wetland. For here? Yeah, for that one. The it's right, right here. Right. So, but that's where that big oak is. We, we we've done the parking. Right. I'm, again, I'm not saying put the building where mm -hmm. the parking lot is and the turnaround is. I'm just saying sliding it down the hill, like half halfway, if there's, possible. There's two there's uh, two kind of issues there too that we we <coughs> need to. If we slide the building up, we will not be able to have a spot to mitigate our stormwater. That, that was one. You of can't issues. slide that. Towards the this, this goes up. This is a hill. We would be digging into the hill, trying to, which is rock. And we wouldn't be, so right now we're kind of using that front area. To, that's really the only spot we. But have. I'm just saying you could slide everything down, plan. including that storm. What, what happens then in that case is the grade. To, to, in order to have that system up at an elevation that will be able to recharge with separation to the water table, we would end up being too steep trying to tie back into that existing driveway. So as it is right now, we go out at about 2%, then it drops down, then it drops down quicker. So it, it's really kind of fit in the only spot that it can fit in and still have a system that <coughs> the requirements. We're limited by the groundwater elevation um, and not being able to push the stormwater system further down. Saw some of your earthwork and yeah, property sure. line so issues as well. So it, right, right. In, if in order to save the tree, that would be arborist. We, 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 after we get past that stormwater infiltration system, we have to go back at five percent mm -hmm. to meet meet the road grade. No, try not to lift that, which will impact the oak and the wetlands on the other side. So it's, that's that's the issue. We're at five percent for. The stormwater infiltration couldn't go underneath the soccer field. It's too low. It's it's too too low. Have to, you'd have to fill the fields up. Yeah. Yeah, you'd have to mound something. Right. And there's no other place that you could mound it or under a road or anything like that. Everything is, without, not without filling everything up quite a bit. And, you know, the, the water table, when you start getting down on the road, it's probably not even two feet below the road yeah. into the water. Additionally, when we did our campus master plan in 2002, this was the site that was highlighted as the best potential site, really right at the woods line. And we, we did explore having it out further, but with the, you know, they're talking about the recharge systems, but also our historical knowledge of flooding down there. Just in the last eight years, we've had three significant floods on our fields, and so we need to, to pull that building up in one way to pull it up without creating a huge retaining wall mm -hmm. is to tuck it back. Otherwise, we actually would have to bring the building up about five feet within the open space, which actually, and also the other thing I would say is from a, from a visual point of view for our neighbors, having it back is going to be more appealing than having it out because it is a, there is mass and height mm -hmm. to the building. And that's one of the reasons we like that site is we feel like it will blend in um, well, when you did your presentation out of what you were talking about the architecture, that was I was thinking, wow, this is a lot like the dorm. Yeah. That when it, it was tucked back into the hill, mm -hmm. which I I actually liked a lot. And this, is, let's face it, you know, a, a big athletic building, which is just a box, it's right. pretty pretty homely. I also understand the point of the board with my other board members is that they're they're looking at a lot of uh, noise being generated mm -hmm. from all the rock crushing. Well, there's that. also some huge trees coming down. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't at the site once. Yeah, and some of them were like over three feet in diameter. Wow, yeah. <coughs> well, large. And oaks. Yeah, except that I, um, let's face it, you know, to me, Cambridge School, I shouldn't say this in front of you, but they have always been so good about working with the town and doing their absolute best. I, I truly wish that all the education... It's not a criticism of Cambridge School. Okay. He's just trying to see if we can save some tree. Okay. Right. Yeah. No, I figure if they, if they come to this conclusion, this is probably about the best thing there is. Mm. Yeah, he's being an architect. I know, I know. I don't mean to be like this. 
Well, it's good to say the big trees, obviously. Oh, of course. Because, yeah. I mean, they, as again, for the flooding part, too, yes. they take up yes. a lot of water. So of and if they go, how, you know, that's, you, you, mm -hmm. you, you want to mm -hmm. think about planting. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different. I don't, I don't know anything about a dormitory. It's different when you have a building type that can step up the hill. Mm -hmm. But this is all on one floor. Well, not all on mm -hmm. 31,000 yeah. square right, foot 30. floor plates. So mm -hmm. you can't really do that with a building like this. So you're cutting into the hill. Right. You cut into the hill on a door, too. That, that one did step up. It did step up, but it was also like cut so Maybe 25% of the foot. Yeah. So, is, I mean, you were thinking sliding it this, you know. Up oh. on that. Part way, like you know, maybe twenty feet, thirty feet. I mean, yeah. I mean, is there I just enough that could be slid that would allow you those trees to be preserved? Well, I was. That's what I was suggesting. I mean, my, I just had a vision of that little notch in the building going around the the pool deck. But um, it, yeah, just down the hill some, or up and on that sheet of paper. Well. It's worth thinking yeah. about, and you'll be coming back to us with more information. Yeah, we so can, uh, think about we can that. show you where we're right at that pinch point of making a storm water yeah. work yeah. before we drop off. It's like the it's like the you know the fill slope on a septic. We're at that great breakout point there. Just right. So, so to give you a point of comparison, the dormitory you can see actually on the site plan mm -hmm. is right there. Um, it's sort of in the upper right. If you, right so there. <laughs> That's the footprint of the dormitory. Right, as opposed to. As opposed. Yeah. yeah, no, I, I get that there's a size difference, a considerable size difference. Yes. But that was also part of my sort of thinking, wow, it's great to tuck this big old, it's, you know, broad sided barn into no, the. Okay, you know, got, got yeah. that. But we're, we're trying to, Steve was just trying to see if there's a way to mitigate that a little bit. Maybe the answer is no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, even if you bring it up. You know, in the westerly direction, and maybe you're even elevating it a little more so that you you can attenuate some of that uh, elevation difference that you need. Um, the thing that it's just it's it's. Yeah, it was, uh, like we, we didn't really play with the setting, but we, about. the fire. Then then we might have some problem with keeping the fire lane and, and having enough. You want to have some runoff on the field, but you want to make sure. Usually like have almost 30 feet, but the, when they're playing, they need to be, have some kind of surface that they can run off the field. You know, uh, during the wall goes off the field. At the river so, school, they have pads on them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how they off that that that's really cool. wall. <laughs> and, and right now, the, the building is roughly six feet higher than that end of the field. So to push it down, you're going to be within 30 feet of that field and, and just making that transition. Is, is we, we really balanced a lot of things from ADA slopes working to stormwater. So obviously we don't want to excavate any more rock than we have to. So uh, there was a lot of things that went into how the site it the way it is. I think you your, your, your entrance on the other side up, you know, up the hill. This is the natural grade. <coughs> That's probably not a good design. <laughs> Um, anybody else comments tonight? Because we're going to have to continue. Anybody, any neighbors uh, with comments um, at all or questions? Erica, do you have anything? Yeah, if you can put up the... Erica, if you could identify if, yourself. Oh, sorry, Ms. Saunders Ellis Road. Um, and there's a whole group of people who aren't here tonight because this is 4th of July week. They're not here. But if you can put the one that has the area, just put them in. Yeah. Uh, the big question is water, water, water. <laughs> I, I say I fully understand the need for this building. I, I know the old gym. So <laughs> um, but the water impact is much more than you might think because, let's see where I'm going to here. Um, You're, it's not just downslope here. What happens is the water that's um, coming, water that's coming down into this flood zone, also has water coming 
from over here, from you, you would know the, the vernal pool that's there in Kendall Common. That vernal pool is draining in that direction. If you have a hurricane situation and you've got a lot of water that you're trying to move and it backs up, then the other side of that vernal pool backs into some yards that are actually on my street. <laughs> um, so your 100-year your worst case, which happens now every three or four years, <laughs> is something really to keep in mind. Because, and I'm so glad to hear about concrete chambers, because then I'm like, oh good, the water may actually stay there and give us time, because you need time for the water. So, um, and, and the other, uh, so that was the, 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 the geographic breadth of it is something that I think people outside the area wouldn't really understand. And the other thing that somebody passed on to me was um, the sewage septic things that they're being able to do are a trade-off as far as um, so how I understand how green they are in some other buildings. But this septic is here in this location. So you want to? Yeah. Yeah. I'll address that. So this, unless Julie wants to. Um, the school applied to Mass DEP. Yeah, Mass DEP you know, for a variance for schools flow. If you have less than ten thousand gallons per day, you end up being able to not do a discharge system. So, so we went through that whole process with our consultant, and on June twelfth, we got approval for that. So the flow is. I think based on about 5,400 a day, so we're well below the 10,000. So it's not really a trade off, it's just taking all of our actual water use and um, we're still tracking and reporting to DEP on July and Board of Health July 1st and December 31st of every year until 2016 so they can continue to track the usage. So I think what I just heard you say, and I'm going to paraphrase it, and if I'm not Correct. Just let me know what the what the DEP has done is that it has taken all of your facilities and it's sort of combined them and it's taken all of the water, uh, all of the affluent situations, and it said the net result because of other um, uh, other conditions around around the property, the net result is for this particular building. Is would be less than the ten thousand. Uh, what is it gallons per day? Um, can I say it differently? So what what they what we have is we have a combination of on-site septic systems, and we're connected in part to Waltham. And what we have been able to do is look at our actual water usages versus what the tables stipulate. So for example, if a table stipulates that a a classroom building uses 2,000 gallons a day, we've demonstrated that maybe our classroom building uses 600 gallons per day over the last three years. And so based on our actual usage, they were, they were able to recalculate our, our total campus discharge into the ground as well below 10,000, actually around 5,400, which gives us significant room to build an on-site septic for this system. Without for this a building, treatment plan. Without a treatment plan. Right. And that's, that was backed up by actual water bills for the last two years. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the issue issue is the variance. It's not a great word. They're not giving them a variance. They're <coughs> agreeing with their numbers mm -hmm. would be a better yeah. word because they only give like four categories of things to count, and it's never the, a category that you need. You know, they, they give you know libraries. You have to make up a number. I just did mm -hmm. one, and they're using their actual meter number to get that. Right, so That's it's not, it's not, this isn't a, a, a sleight of hand. Not a sleight of hand, they're not giving them, they're not giving them a variance like we think of a variance, mm -hmm. like you're close to the property line and hey, that's okay. And they're saying, you say you're going to drain 55 gallons of stormwater a day, I mean, effluent. effluent a day, we agree with you. Yeah. Uh, that, that's more along the lines of it. So they're not getting a pass or anything. Or, and, and what I heard a little bit in your comment or question was that, you know, we're not, because we have three green buildings on campus where we're using 
composting toilets and other systems that allow us to have this low water usage. We're not going that route with this building. We have many reasons for that. We, we still have really looked very hard at our water usage throughout the campus, and that's why we're very proud of this number that we've come up with, which is very low usage for a school. The only other thing about the stuff is I heard that you were considering a couple different spots, and you know, the spot we've kind of seen, which is up on the hill, I don't think would bother much of anyone. I don't put the other spot being considered. Um, can you show us a proposal? Yeah, okay, I'm mean, probably not prepared to speak with that because it's not our, yeah. it's called Kerry. I mean, I can yeah. just sort of point out where approximately, but we're working with. Um, with our wastewater alternatives, and we'll and we we met with um, we're going to be we've been in contact with Wendy at Fort Health. So right now this this didn't have enough area. It perked some places perked fine, but it wasn't a big enough area for the system. So we're looking at some areas up along here as well as back in here and trying to balance out. And we spoke with Michelle at. Concom this morning trying to balance out, you know, whether we're beyond the hundred foot line, which is a, or I guess a DEP issue. So we'll keep your prize of where that comes. If that's the case. If, if I, if my memory serves me correctly, in both of those locations, you are either at or over the property line that Betsy was just talking about. So that's another issue that we need to have clarification. Right, because you're going to need, probably need a bigger feel than one that what's shown there on that drawing. It's my guess, maybe not. Well, we're also um, Paul is also looking into some different technology to see if he can minimize the field size yeah. um, and keep it to that size rather than. Wendy well, likes the traditional ones, but so it works. It work. Some people do put them under the road. Yeah. 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 Y
but this could well become one of those areas, yes, that we would also share with other parts of the neighborhood, obviously. Yes. John, did you have any comments? Yeah, I, I'm a neighbor who's John, sitting here. Identify yourself. Yeah, I'm John A. Fisk, and I live with Marty Fisk at A French Road, and she was on the sidewalk, and, mm. and I'm sorry I couldn't be there too, but she made sure I was here tonight. And there may, I'm trying to think of all the reasons why I love having the Cambridge School as a neighbor. You're one of them. <laughs> they just try to do everything that, that, that Kendall Common wants or French Road Right of Elections and Street Association wants. Well, another reason is that this field, I live right here, provides me an infinite supply of baseball. <laughs> <laughs> they hit a lot of foul balls. And sometimes they wind up way over here. <laughs> But this is a great recreation area at Cross Country Ski in there. It's wonderful. The, the one problem we've had in Vinnie Agnello's tennis court, which I, is right in here somewhere, was under about three inches of water two years ago. It was around Christmas time. We had that horrible flood. And, and I wonder if it's the drain. It, it's complicated between the, tr yeah, between the drain the and the Cambridge board. School. Yeah. I think that that ditch there's a ditch there that ends up in a culvert, and I don't know if the culvert got clogged or what it was. That, I just, that is probably some consequence of the field, but mm -hmm. I'm not sure what to do about it. I mean, that, that is a, a, like you're saying, that, that, that is a natural drainage course. Yeah, yeah absolutely. You, I mean, I'm guaranteed if we looked back on all the maps, you'd see a, a stream coming out of this. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Pretty large wetland uh, in the back here, right on the line, and it, it went one time drain out here, this, Two series of culverts that you, you got to you got to come together. So, uh, well, and that is a little part of maintenance. If uh, the school's culverts probably should be cleaned out, and if they do, that would bring even more water down. <laughs> well, so, no, I mean, the whole but, uh, culvert, culvert yeah, system. Yeah, and downstream up there probably yeah. does need to be. Uh, that water is eventually sure. running under Lexington as it's said, yeah. crosses, yeah. right? So the DPW might be able to help a little. That, that would be downstream. I think so. There would be the place to really look at that. Yeah, I think we need yeah. to get you guys talking to the DPW. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we'll see if we can yeah, we'll get Steve Fogg. Yeah, yeah. 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 Thank thanks for the opportunity. Sure, John. Um, all right. I think Betsy will we'll need to get have a, a continuation of the hearing to get the information in that. Uh, we need to, over the next uh, period of time, when would we continue to? Um, either the 23rd of July or August 20th. Is, is August 20th what we decided on for August? I think so. I think okay. I'm not here on the 23rd of July. Remember, I sent you an email. Right, right. So you wouldn't be available for that meeting. Um, yes, August twentieth. Uh, yeah. So, so, so July twenty third, because August twentieth, we already have five public hearings. So it would be 10 o'clock on July 23rd. Uh, okay, so we're it's continued to July 23rd. What time? Um, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. So we, we will see you 10 o'clock July 23rd. And that'll give you guys enough information to finish up your little parts and yep. you'll have enough time to yeah. review things, right? Kind of a complicated thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to see you at I'll make sure I have a I'm John. John, Julie, nice to see you. Yeah, John. Good to see you. So, we're going to give you a little bit of a 
very gentle. I've gone home. I see fire. Yeah, the one, the one under Lexington Street. You'd want him to look at the downstream there first. Yeah, starting the Lexington. Because I spent a lot of time in the side line. I think it, I think they always have a problem. It's where Lexington meets Pine because of that where, where it goes under. Yeah, just about right. Yeah. Should I keep behind you? Yeah. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to yeah. are you, you, are you guys aren't, aren't up for anything in, that we have on the well, this is the this camp thing's not going to take very long, so we'll take we'll take Conan first. I'm just going to step out the hall. Okay. My lead bike wants to talk. I'm sleeping. So this is where I'm basically.